Okay, um, I'm going to break with uh, tag tradition. Uh, lots of people have talked about <coughs> things being work in progress. This is actually a completed work, um, <laughs> which is uh, published in October in Norwegian Archaeological Review. Um, so, where are we? I'm going to begin the paper with a proposition that uh, image making is a form of world making um, or that image making shapes new ontologies and I'm going to explore this claim uh, this rather bold claim maybe through a specific case study the decorated slate plaques of the Neolithic of the Isle of Man so situated in the uh, middle of the Irish Sea the Isle of Man is distinct from but related to the neighbouring regions of Britain and Ireland during the late Neolithic. Um, and this paper is going to focus on artefacts from two sites, uh, Ronald's Way down in the south of the island and Balavari up in the north. So the Ronald's Way site was discovered and excavated during the Second World War in 1943 to be precise. Uh, during extensions to, to Ronald's Way Airport. It was excavated by Mrs. E. McGaw and the report was published after the war by Mr. B. McGaw and J., Mr. J. Bruce. So uh, she was sending reports to her husband who was actually involved in, uh, in action during the war. So There's a really interesting sort of story there relating to gender uh, and so on and the whole process of excavation which I can't get into. Um, so the, the excavation was undertaken in rescue conditions and revealed the site of a probable Neolithic house. The Ronald's Way site became the type site for the Manx late, late Neolithic after excavations by the internee Dr Gerhard Bursu. Um, so the Isle of Man was a, a wartime intern, uh, internment camp, but they allowed Bursu off to go and excavate sites. <laughs> so uh, Bursu uh, excavated at Balaterre in the north of the island and proved the existence of a widespread Neolithic culture. So he'd excavated in Balaterre and uh, uh, Mr. McGaw was excavating in Ronald's Way and they sort of joined the dots between the two. AMS radiocarbon dates by Tim Darvel and Steve Burrow uh, showed the, Neolith the Ronald's Way sites to be firmly situated in the 3rd millennium BC, while recent dates um, produced by Rachel Krellin as part of her doctoral thesis showed that many sites extend into the beginning of the 2nd millennium BC. The Ronald's Way house excavations include extensive finds of material culture, including a num number of distinctive Manx roughened truncated butt polished stone axes so these are partially polished I don't have an image of these here but we'll see some um, in a second um, so RTB rough, roughened truncated butt axes humpback scrapers these peculiar scrapers you can see here and these delicate slate plaques Um, <clears throat> so this slide actually shows you all the uh, slate plaques discovered from the Isle of Man so we've got a sum total of six it's not a huge number um, five of them are from Ronald's Way and uh, the other example is from Balavari discovered by Larch Garrett in the 1980s <clears throat> uh, what we can also see is some of the original documentation of the plaques from Ronald's Way um, and these, this actually illustrates some of the difficulties uh, Mr. McGaw had in discerning the decoration. So you can actually see uh, sort of crossings out, rubbings out on that image, um, which is actually prescient, as we'll, as we'll see in a second. A recent program of digital imaging as part of the Making a Mark project using RTI has revealed several details about uh, 
decoration on the plaques for the first time. The first thing the digital images, images show is the organisation of the decoration, um, the clear horizontal registers, although we had known this for some time, I mean, that was discerned back in the 1940s. We've just got better images of it here. The second thing the RTI images show is the extent of overwriting and erasure on the plaques. The plaques are palimpsests in the proper sense of the word. Um, and you can clearly see the, um, on the left there is the Balavari plaque. And you can see the top of the slide is um, a register of um, vertical lines which have been overwritten by uh, diagonals. And um, this is one of the Ronswell <coughs> plaques on the, on the right. And at the top of that plaque, you can see sort of grinding around the top surface. Below that grinding is actually a register of decoration. So they're actually removing decoration by, uh, by grinding. So how are we to think about these plaques? One of the clear points to emerge from handling the plaques in the Manx Museum was that all but one had been deliberately broken or snapped. This decoration appears to have occurred after the plaques were broken. Uh, fragmentation, you can see why I asked John to, uh, <laughs> to, to help with the session. Fragmentation appears to be quite important to, uh, to these plaques. Um, the intact plaque, which is you know, just on the top uh, right there, uh, is curious as it bears a close physical resemblance to a polished stone axe. In fact, the excavators remark on this, and Stuart Piggott, writing in uh, 1954 in his uh, sort of magna, magnum opus on, on uh, Neolithic Britain and Ireland, um, goes as far as calling this an axe amulet. The axe-like qualities of the plaques are further strengthened by evidence for grinding. I showed you that grinding on the plaque, almost as if they're grinding the point of, of the uh, plaques as you would grind um, an axe. But why are most of the plaques broken? This again links them to polished stone axes. Uh, we found that 21% of the Manx axes are also snapped in the same fashion as we see with this example here from Balakowin. So they're actually not just snapping these delicate sleep plaques, but they're also snapping um, stone axes. The decoration on the plaques is also linked to decoration on the large slate standing stone at Clonkin Howe. So there are relational connections then to stone axes and to large stone monuments. We also find relational connections further afield with another stone plaque from the stone axe production site at Greg Lewis in North Wales. <coughs> RTI analysis of this stone plaque reveals repetitive incised decoration um, followed by uh, flake scars. So you can see the decoration on the plaque. And then you've got those large scars, um, invasive flakes coming into the surface of the plaque. Um, and you've also then got <coughs> pecking over the top of the decoration. So they, it's as if they've created the decoration and then it's sort of destroyed by, by whatever means possible. Um, so we've also got practices of erasure uh, occurring here. The Manx plaques are miniature stone axes, while miniature mace heads are also a feature of Irish passage tomb contexts. Passage tombs predate the Manx sites, suggesting that min miniaturisation was a long-term feature of material practices in the Irish Sea region during the Neolithic. We can also consider relationalities further afield. There's a family resemblance in the organisation of motifs on the Manx plaques and those on schist plaques from contemporary uh, 
Portuguese and Spanish tholos and passage stream contexts. It's good not to leave Iberia. Um, the, the scale of the Iberian plaques is much greater than the Manx plaques. The Manx plaques are this, sort of this size, the Iberian plaques are this kind of size. <coughs> The making and decoration of the Manx plaques therefore enact relational connectivities at a series of regional and extra-regional scales. On the Isle of Man, connections are established with stone axe manufacture and treatment and the decoration of standing stones. Connections are also established further afield to Wales, Ireland and Iberia. While the making and decoration of plaques establish relational connections, it's also critical to note that remaking decoration establishes new connectivities. If the particular configuration of relational connections produces new assemblages with distinct ontologies, we can begin to see that image making shapes new ontologies. So as I began, image making is world making. So I want to develop that idea now. I'm just going to take a drink of water. We've seen that the plaques are produced in a formal sequence of ma uh, making, fragmentation and decoration. It would be easy to describe this as a cultural biography. However, I want to avoid this term. Instead, borrowing a concept from science studies scholar Anne-Marie Moll, I describe them as multiple objects. The Manx plaques are multiple objects because they're composed of a series of different and overlapping relations. They're restless and changeable objects which do not appear to readily lend themselves to a single mode of understanding or representation. As multiple objects, the plaques both act and are enacted. This is partly due to their composition from slate Slate's not an inert substance. Marks on its surface fade rapidly and the rock fractures easily. The other properties of the slate depend very much on how it's worked. In the Isle of Man, slate may be used to make de uh, delicate plaques or substantial standing stones. The properties of slate are not set in stone. The Manx plaques force us to think afresh about practices of visualisation. The motifs scratched on their surface are hardly visible, yet they contrast with other highly visible acts of visualisation, such as the decoration of standing stones. Visual motifs on the plaques are not so much records as enactments. Incising the plaques appears to do something, positioning the plaques in novel networks of relationships even if momentarily. The plaques emerge as a distinctive practice of intimate visual enactment, the visual enactment of change. I'll leave it there.